Hello everyone. Welcome back to Code Grid. Today we are going to create this amazing 3D carousel using CSS and GSAP. We will leverage CSS perspective and translate 3D functions to animate the carousel's depth along the z-axis. I am confident that till this date this is the most comprehensive tutorial on YouTube for creating a slider of this type like if you stick till the end I am sure you will gain real understanding of how it's done. Before we dive into the tutorial just know that you can have exclusive access to the source code and also the monthly website templates with CodeGrid Pro. If you appreciate what I do and would like to support the channel please check out the link in the description below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you are new here. Now let's move on to the coding part. Just to ensure our page doesn't look empty, we are going to add a navigation bar and a footer. Let's start with the navbar. We will divide navbar into three parts, the logo, navigation links to different pages and links related to shopping. We will wrap these links into separate containers so that it is easier to align them later using Flexbox. Similarly, we will create a footer with some dummy text. Moving on to the centerpiece of our project, the slider. We will need a container that holds our slider. Following that, we will add a wrapper for the slider, which will serve as the collective home for all the individual cards. Each card will have an image and a copy for the text. We will utilize an H1 tag. For now, we will only have 5 cards, but feel free to include more if you would like. Just keep in mind that if you add more slides, you may need to adjust the translate Z value slightly inside the script. This ensures that as you increase the number of the slides, they remain in close to each other and within the view. And that's about it for the setup. Now let's move on to styling. As usual, we will start by removing default margins and paddings of each and every element. I'll also set my favorite font on the body which will be reflected on the navbar and the footer. Next we will define some generic styles for the image just so it takes full width and height of its parent while maintaining its aspect ratio. Let's also define some basic font styles for the anchor links and the paragraph text. For the navbar and footer, we will apply some simple styles like making them full width and adding some padding. We will use flexbox to arrange the columns properly. It's pretty straightforward so we will mainly focus on the slider in this video. We won't dive too deep but if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment. For the container, we are going to set its position to relative. This way we can position our slider absolutely within it later on, giving us the flexibility to place the slider anywhere we want inside the container. We will also ensure that the container spans the full viewport width and height and we will set overflow to hidden to prevent any unwanted scrolling. For the slider, we will position it absolutely and slightly lower it from the top using the top property. It will also cover the full viewport width and height. Since this wrapper will hold our cards and we aim to achieve a 3D look on our cards, we will add a perspective setting to the wrapper. You can play around with this value to understand how it influences the depth and the Z position of the cards. 
we will also adjust the perspective origin to specify the point from which the viewer appears to be looking at the slider for the card as of now we will position them all in the center of the wrapper and set width and height along with the generic styles For the images, an absolute position will push them behind the copy and low opacity will make them appear little darker due to the black background color we set on the card above. For the text container, we will position it towards the center of the card and apply a clip mask around it. This is to enable the text animation effect I demonstrated in the intro. Next, we will give the text some basic styling including alignment, font choice, size and weight plus a color that matches the container and a bit of letter spacing. Finally, we will prepare to animate the text by targeting span elements that we will use to wrap each letter. Although we don't currently have these spans in our HTML, we will dynamically split the headers text into span tags using JavaScript. By setting their position to relative and display to inline block, we will be able to animate their movement along the X and Y axis as desired. You might also need to add media queries to adjust the navbar's appearance on mobile devices. And that's everything. Now it's time to animate our slider and bring it to life. We will start by creating a custom ease for our animations using the custom ease plugin by GSAP. We will also need a flag called ease animating and set it to false. This will help us prevent animation overlaps by tracking whether an animation is currently in progress or not. Now I will paste this small kind of utility function I have been using from last couple of months. If you have been following along in some of my previous videos, you might remember this little function that splits text into individual letters and wraps them in span tags. When it encounters an empty character, instead of ignoring it, it inserts a non-breaking space using the HTML entity code. After preparing our text, we will move on to initializing the cards in our slider. The initialize cards function selects all elements with the class name of card and uses GSAP to animate their position. In this animation, we are calculating the position of each card dynamically. For the vertical position, we start at minus 15% and increase by 15% for each card stacking them with a clear offset from top. Similarly for the depth which is the z axis, we simply multiply the card's index by 15 which will progressively push each card further back. This creates a layered 3D effect on the cards. We will use our custom easing with some stagger so each card animates with a slight delay. This setup will not only position the cards but also prepares them for the continued animation. When the document is loaded, we will run split function on the H1s to transform our headings into letters. Then we initialize the positioning of our cards with initialize cards function. We will also set an initial position for the letters to be moved up, preparing them for the entrance animation. The last card's letters are set to their default position since this last card will be already visible at front when the page loads. So we need to make sure that the text inside it is also visible to the user. Now to animate our carousel, we will add a click event listener to the entire document. Using our flag, this listener checks if animation is currently happening or not. If not, it proceeds to animate our slider. It sets the flag to true to prevent other animations from starting. Inside the click event, we select our slider and its cards including the last one which will go out of view on click and the upcoming one as well. 
First of all, we will animate the last card's text downwards as it moves out of the view. Next, we need to push the last card itself downwards. Once it is out of the view, we will prepend it in the sliders array, adding it to the first index back in the carousel. We also need to update the position of the rest of the cards just so they come ahead after the last card is moved. We will call initialize cards function again in order to do that. We also need to push the copy of this last card back up just so when it comes into view again, the copy is animated correctly. Here we will add little delay of a second before we again update the flag. This is to ensure that the user is unable to click again on the document and move cards while previous animation is still going on. Lastly, we will animate next cards text into the view, creating a seamless transition that brings our slider to life with each click. And there you have it. Hope you find this video helpful. See you in the next video.